Welcome back friends! In the previous tutorial, we set up the node tree for a dialog box and created a test story file. In this tutorial, our dialog player will get some much needed GD script while we learn the basics of using the story files and the story file reader class. As usual, this project will be available on GitHub, link below. There's a lot to get done, so let's get to it. Let's play a game. While coding this script, I make two typos that prevent the code from running properly. Can you catch them before I do at the end? Add a new script to the dialog player node. I like to separate my classes into four sections, virtual, callback, public, and private methods. To the virtual section, we're going to override the ready function to initialize our dialog player and the input function to capture when the player presses the spacebar key. To the callback section, we'll add two functions. The on dialog player pressed spacebar function will be called when the player presses the spacebar, and a second function which will be called when the body animation player finishes displaying the dialog text. We can get Godot to create the second function for us by connecting the body animation player's finished signal to our dialog player script. To the public section, we'll only add one function, play dialog, that takes a unique human readable name for the dialog record in our story file and plays the associated dialog. In the private section, add the is playing and is waiting functions. The get next node function is responsible for retrieving the next node in our dialog chain. The get tag text function searches a raw string from our nodes for custom tags and returns the substring cut from between the tags. Finally, the play node function is responsible for displaying the active node in the dialog box. Next, we'll need to get references from a few nodes from our node tree, specifically the body animation player to start the dialog text animation, the body label to change the text in the dialog box, the dialog box's root control node to hide and show the dialog box, the speaker label to change the name of the speaker, and the pressed spacebar 9 patch rectangle to hide and show the icon to the player. Right below our node references comes the global variables. We have four of them, the current dialog ID, DID, the current node ID, NID, the final NID, so our dialog player knows when it has reached the end of the dialog, and last, a reference to our story file reader. Now we have everything we need to start filling in these functions, beginning with the ready function. Load the story file reader class from the Godot dialog system add-on folder and create an instance of the class assigned to the story reader global variable. Next, load the baked test story file we made from the previous tutorial and feed the story into the story reader via the read function. When the dialog player starts up, we don't want to see the dialog box or the press spacebar icon until we get a request to play a dialog, so we want them to be invisible by default. Since this is an example project, there are no other external nodes to request the dialog player to play a dialog, so we'll do it right here at the end of the ready function via the public play dialog function for the purpose of testing. Pass the function the unique name we made in the previous tutorial to identify our test dialog record. Now we're ready to really get into the details. Let's code the play dialog function. We have the human readable unique name for the dialog record in the story file via the input parameter, but we need the record's numerical dialog ID. Luckily, the story reader has a function, get DID via record name, which can retrieve the dialog ID associated with the record name. 
If you're curious, the Godot Dialog System's GitHub README page has all the details about the story reader's functions. We'll assign the returned dialog ID to our global DID variable. Next, we need to find two node IDs from the nodes in the dialog record. The NID of the node the player will start playing from, and the NID of the node the player will finish on. In our test story file, our start and end nodes have start and end tags that we can search for with the story reader using the get and ID via exact text function. When we pass this function a DID and some text to search for, it will return the NID of the first node where it finds the provided text. We assign these NIDs to our global NID and final NID variables. Because the current node is our start node, it has nothing to display and we need to find the next node in the link chain, so we call the getNextNode function. Once the getNextNode function points our global NID variable to the first node we want to display, we can call the playNode function to load the first node's data into our dialog box. The node's data is now loaded into the dialog box, but we can't see it because it's invisible by default. So the last thing we need to do is to change the dialog box's visibility to true. We just breezed over the get next node and play node functions, but we'll go over them in detail now. The get next node function is fairly simple. In our test story file, each node only has one output slot, slot zero connected to the input of the next node. To get the NID of the next node in the chain, we just have to find which NID is associated with slot zero of the current node. Our story reader will come to our rescue again by means of the get NID from slot function. If we pass this function a DID, NID, and a slot number, it will return the NID of the node that the slot is connected to. In this case, the next node in the dialog chain when it returns the next NID, assign this to the global NID variable. It is also in this function where we can check the end condition of our dialog chain. If the NID we just assigned to the global NID variable equals the NID of the end node, we know that the dialog player's job is finished, so we can hide it again by turning its visibility to false. The play node function is also fairly simple. The first thing it does is retrieve the raw text stored in the current node. Use the story reader's get text function by passing the DID and NID and store the text to a new variable. The play node function makes heavy use of the get tag text custom utility function. The raw text from our node contains the speaker and dialog tags. To get the substrings from between these tags, Use the get tag text function by passing the tag name and the raw text string and store the result to the new speaker and dialog variables. Now that we have all the data we need to populate the dialog box, set the speaker's label text parameter to the speaker variable and likewise with the body label and the dialog variable. The last thing the play node function is responsible for is starting the dialog text animation. Pass the name of the animation we created from the previous tutorial to the body animation player's play function. As for the get tag text function, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it takes the name of the tag and the raw text as inputs and outputs the substring of the text between the defined start and end tags. When the body animation player is finished animating the text, it will send a signal to our dialog player's on body animation player animation finished function. The only thing we need to do in this function is make the pressed spacebar button visible so the player knows the dialog player is waiting for them to continue. When the player presses the spacebar, it will send an input event to the input function. In the input function, first check that the received event is an input event key, or in other words, an event from the keyboard. Then check if the keyboard event is related to the spacebar key and if the button was just pressed. If all of these conditions are true, the on dialog player pressed spacebar function will be called. The on dialog pressed spacebar function closes the loop of our dialog player. If there's still more dialog to display, it will get the next note and play it. 
otherwise it will do nothing. In this function, first make sure the dialog player is in waiting mode. Waiting mode means that the pressed spacebar button icon is visible. The isWaiting function returns true if the press spacebar button is visible. When the player is ready to continue, the press spacebar icon will be hidden and the next node in the dialog chain will be retrieved. If the next node is the end node, the whole dialog box will become hidden. If the dialog box is hidden, the isPlaying function will return false. Otherwise, it calls the play node function to display the next node in the dialog chain. Finally, let's define the two smallest functions, isWaiting and isPlaying. And with that, we're finished. Except for one thing. Have you forgotten about our game? Were you able to spot my two typos? Here are the answers. Answer number one. In line four, in the find node function, change the body underscore LBL string to body underscore label. Answer two. In the play dialog function, when defining the final NID global variable, add arrow brackets to the end tag parameter. Now with the mistakes corrected, let's take our dialog player out for a spin. Press F6 to run the scene. Voila! A basic dialog player. In the next tutorial, we'll give our dialog player the ability to inject variables into our dialog text at runtime. If you don't want to miss it, be sure to hit subscribe and the bell icon. In the meantime, if you want to know more about my adventures in game dev, follow my devlogs on Twitter, and I post to Instagram about my life in Japan. Links below. Hope to see you around. Until then, happy devving.